So answering your question, Corinne, res resilience and adaptation. So if we look at it in terms of resilience, it's the ability to bounce back from a stressor. And you know we're, we're meant to keep a good upright posture, but when things come along where we can't bounce back, if we can't bounce back, this is how we change to survive. We adapt and to a comp compensated degree. So it looks something like this. Where structurally, we look to be upright, but when we get stressed, and if we're not actually handling that stress, muscles will get tight, our necks can go forward, our shoulders might roll forward there, one leg may become shorter, our body symmetry goes off. And well, we know this can cause, you can say, short myopic vision, basically. When our body looks like that, that can affect our vision. So we want to see what it takes instead of just adapting to our world. And you can say physically, but also emotionally and mentally. We want to see what we can do to bounce back, to have the resilience to, to actually bounce back. We may not look like the upper picture, but at least have the feeling of the upper picture of resilience. So addressing stress in a healthy way is our highest leverage for health. So I've come to that conclusion in my life. Maybe you share the same perspective. You know, how we handle the pressures in our life has a lot to do with our ability to stay healthy again for the short and long term. So introducing the heart math solution to enhance our resilience, your resilience, it lowers stress cortisol hormones. We know when we get stress, cortisol can rise. It helps to maintain emotional clarity in the midst of chaos and enhanced balanced sense of interoception. Now that might be a new term to you, interoception. So let me explain further. Interception, it's a sense that helps you understand and feel what's going on inside your body physically, mentally, and emotionally. By regularly practicing interoception aware activities, you can improve your ability to understand and manage your emotions to enhance your whole health. Heart math can assist with your conscious awareness of interoception with an appropriate balanced response. So we can be aware of what's happening within ourselves, physically, mentally, and emotionally, but at the same time, we won't have to get caught up with those feelings or with that perception. We can have a balanced resp response in respect to it. Okay. okay. Heart-brain relationship. Now, the, the essence of, or the principle behind heart math is scientifically, it's been found that the heart sends far more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. So scientifically, we found, you can say, you, the conversation between our brain and our heart is our heart actually does more of the speaking. It's actually conversing more with our brain. So the influences from our heart can influence the centers of our brain that relate to our decision-making, our ability to handle stress or our, our mood, it, it influences the, the brain in such a way that if our heart is in position, in a right position, it influences the brain, and you could say in a healthy way, in an emotionally healthy way. So let's look at that further. So in terms of the science, there's some, it's based on heart rate variability. And heart rate variability is the space of time between each heart beat. And you can see how it's slightly variable. So our, our heart is actually speeding up and slowing down at the same time at, in sequence, and it relates to our autonomic nervous system. So we should have a variability between each heartbeat. And when there's a healthy variability, it gives us a sense of, you can say, emotional stability, mental clarity. So patterned out, this is what happens when we're frustrated. Our HRV, our heart rate variability pattern, our heart rate with time looks jagged. And it could be other feelings like anger or anxiety. It can look like this. Where we're in a state of appreciation or thankfulness or kindness, our heart rate can pattern out to look like that. And you can say when we're looking like this, it, we're in the zone, basically. And with heart math and heart rate, it's not a matter of just being in a restful, relaxed position, but you can be in a high velocity event, Olympic athletes, and they can be what's called in the zone. You've, I'm sure you've heard of that. 
and you can be have a, a heart rate that's accelerated because you're in a high velocity event. And if your heart rate looks like this, it optimizes your performance. But you want to be optimal when you're relaxed and optimal when you, you, you need to be actually doing something, like you were saying, Corinne. So here's a clincher for me. So the influence from our hearts influences our blood pressure, part of our brain called the medulla, the brain stem, part of the brain stem. It influences our amygdala, where our emotionally stored patterns are. And if there's coherent, you can see coherent or in the zone patterns, what happens is they can influence the brain from patterns that may be stuck. You can say these patterns, these aberrant patterns that we may have had in the past, those patterns may be stuck in, say, emotionally grooved patterns related to the amygdala. But if we can change, get into what's called coherence, it helps to de-imprint those grooves of emotional, you can say, set patterns to help us think clearer in that respect. So if you look at it in terms of resilience, it helps give us a sense of reserve. Okay. If we're just adapting, we're, we're compensating. There's compensations there. You can, again, physically, blood pressure-wise, amygdala-wise, emotional-wise, thought-wise. So this, this picture was a clincher for me that helped me affirm more what heart math was about and how it can be of value to us. So past, present, and future. We can change our future. You know, most of us have had aberrant backgrounds here where we've had our jagged times, but if we can get coherent in the present moment where our, the patterns extending out from us are coherent, you can say it gives us a sense of trust in the future, right where we are in the present moment, that things can work out, that old patterns don't have to keep repeating themselves. So how do I become coherent, the big idea? So here are some heart math basics of a quick coherence technique. So one thing they found through heart math is that if we focus our feeling attention on our heart, it actually takes the, you can say the accelerated spin from our mind that may be happening when we get stressed to actually slow that down, to actually have a little bit more, you can say, so you, a pattern of, of presence. So let's, little, let's practice this together for a moment. So if you're okay putting your hands on your heart, and if not, we can just breathe together. For some people, this the thought of putting their hands on their heart may cause anxiety, but if it doesn't, you can put your hands on your heart. And just imagine breathing in, actually breathing in through your heart. Imagine your nose being on your heart. So get that feeling, feel that feeling in your heart and upright in yourself, breathing in through your heart, in slow, and out slower. So when you breathe in slow and out slower, it activates your parasympathetic system, your calming part of your nervous system. So let's do that a little bit on our own, uprighting ourselves and breathing in slow and out slower. Again. Okay. Okay. That's a start with step one of quick coherence. And then the second part is consider what makes you smile. What do you love for sure? You know, this is our cat and we love our cat for sure. And it gives us a feeling of, of love. So consider what makes you smile. What do you love for sure? Okay. Okay, consider that. You may want to write it down. If you want to write it in the chat, that's great too. Okay. And feel the feeling of that. Now, one thing with heart math, it's not just thinking about the things you love, but to feel the feeling of it. And it's it's not so much a a, a thought process, it's it's actually an experience. So there's a difference with practicing heart math. You really have to let it let it influence your heart and if you find and if and you might find for yourself as you consider something you love it should give, it give you a whole body feeling 
And when you have that, then you're, you're right there. Okay, so quick coherence, quick steps. So putting this together, hard focus breathing, slow in and slower out, and then activating a positive or renewing feeling. Experience what makes you smile. Hard focus, breathe the positive emotion. So let's practice. Okay, so it's upright ourselves. Now, another thing about posture, just deliberately uprighting ourselves for a moment as we do this actually helps put us in more of a conscious position to experience coherence. So hard focus, breathing, focus your feeling attention on your heart. Breathing in slow and out slower. All right. Consider something that makes you smile and feel the feeling of that. And feel the feeling, breathe that feeling in through your heart and out through your whole body. Breathing in. And breathing out. And let it fill your body to overflowing and let that influence extend out into the world. Breathing in. And breathing out. One more time. Great. Very good. Okay, that's a good start, you all. Okay, practice. So a state of coherence takes practice. It takes practice to become an established trait. So, you know, folks have noticed in my expression that you know, they feel, they, they sense that I'm calm, but it's taken some time to establish that, to help establish a trait and continue to establish that trait. But it, it takes practice. And every morning I'll do heart math to begin my day, along with an exercise pro program, but it, it's been helpful. Okay, and then using a sensor. Now, with heart math, science-wise, and this is where science meets spirit, they, they've developed a sensor to actually measure your heart rate variability and to see if you're in a state of coherence. So there's sensors. There's a Bluetooth sensor, and then there's an EM Wave 2 sensor. This is a sensor I use every morning. Okay. So seeing is believing, to actually have something on hand where you can actually affirm that you're actually doing the practice. And for folks may not do heart math, but if you meditate or pray or, or other activities like conscious activities, you can actually use this to see if, if you're in a state of, of rhythm, of heart rate variability that is coherent. So it does take practice. Okay, I'm, I'll share this a little bit later, but this is a YouTube video I developed on terms of how to use the heart math sensor. So if there's time, we can show that later. Well, let me continue on. Okay, the essence of heart math. So to me, this is the essence of heart math. It's a poem by Martin Cecil called Any Moment. Any moment of hating, any moment of lying, any moment of resentment is a moment of dying. Any moment of loving, any moment of giving, any moment of thankfulness is a moment of living. All our moments add together like the digits in a sum. And the answer tells us plainly whether life or death shall come. So as we cultivate attitudes and feelings of love, of givingness, of thankfulness, of kindness, those are, those are coherent generating emotions, attitudes, positions of our heart, and they all add together. And if we add those cumulative, aggregatively, then we, we have an experience of life, a sense of well-being. Let me look at it in terms of this to help illustrate another angle of approach. You can say all of us are beings of light. And in my seminar yesterday, Life's Homecoming, uh, the doctor who spoke about neuroscience mentioned that basically, in essence, scientifically, as it found, we're all emitting photonic emissions. We're all emitting, you'd say, sunlight influences. And it's a matter of that sunlight influence being felt in our hearts by a coherent heart, a heart that's kept in attitudes of thankfulness, appreciation, and patience. 
And when, when that happens, when we establish that state in our heart, our heart is so fixed in that way, then it allows for a, a quiet, directed, conscious mind. Mind. Our mind is our rudder of our heart, which allows for enhanced conscious awareness of interoception, as I was talking about, for self-regulation. It's a matter of that's how we find our calm. Physiologic, physiologically. And when that happens, then our body feels a vitality of that. So we can extend, you can say we're, we're here to extend an ex extending an integrated life-giving influence. Okay. Okay. So let's let's complete this little discussion time, this little lesson time with a heart math meditation. So we'll continue on with practicing a little bit. So hands over our hearts, if you if that works for you uprighting ourselves and you can close your eyes if you like and let's begin by breathing in slow and out slower breathing in slow and out slower and considering something that makes you smile and feel that feeling in your heart and breathe that feeling in your heart and out through your heart and through your whole body. And let that extend out. Maybe let it extend to a specific person you know. They appreciate that, if you, that influence or to the world in general. As we are individually coherent, and as more of us are, you'd say it, it sets the stage for a critical mass of us to, to change this world. But we can play our part in that. So as we breathe in slow, and breathe out slower, acknowledging the part we play, the influence, the energetic influence we can play in this world. Okay.